Our next uh, our next story comes from TechMonitor.ai, which is I guess the bastion of of tech news. The title here is "Over 600 Vulnerabilities Found in Average Software Container Study Reveals." So, keeping in mind the context that this was put together by a company who um, who services like software bills of material and and software composition analysis and that sort of stuff. It is a fascinating and although not entirely surprising to me report that basically that the average actively downloaded container available on like docker.io contains 604 vulnerabilities, like known vulnerabilities, not, not like unknown. I, I assume it's probably larger if you were to, to, to factor that in, but and then they say that of those 604 on average, 45% are between two and 10 years old. And I, yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is crazy. But I think it, it, I think it highlights the point that, and, and look, I, I have a lot of experiences of late running containers because of the infosec.exchange and all of it, all of its friends. And my observation is that um, a lot of the, especially the open source containers focus on like the application that you're using yep. that, you know, whether that's like peer tube or, 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 you know, some, some application that, you know, the release an update with that new, you know, the, the new version of that, but they're not necessarily updating other components of the operating system, or let's say PHP or Apache or Nginx or MySQL. And so I think that's what's happening here, you know, writ large. And in some instances, you know, they're, they're, they're pointing out that 4.2% of the vulnerabilities that were rated high or critical that existed in that set of 604 uh, were known to be actively exploited. Yeah, that, the, that is a little bit more troubling. But a couple of things I would expect. It's probably a fairly monolithic container, which means they probably haven't thinned it down to just the apps and packages to run whatever the containers purposes. And so a lot of those might be sitting there, but aren't actually being executed. They're probably not being loaded in memory. They're probably just a bunch of packages. They're just sitting there in a monolithic install of some default install that they're doing. And they're probably not updating those packages on a regular basis. So part of me questions how risky those unpatched packages truly are in a real world running example, excepting for somebody who's got a foothold, they're using it for a lateral movement or a privilege escalation or something like that. I've seen that a lot. I've also seen a lot of folks don't bother updating their base containers. Uh, they load whatever the operating system is and whatever it comes with, and they never do updates except for the stuff they think they need. Also, things migrate over time or, or wander over time to different packages, and it's a mess. But there are better ways to handle containers, and there are better ways to keep them up to date and, and keep them you know, from having this problem. But I think this is incredibly systemic. I think it's one of those things that, hey, it works, great. Let's move on. These vulnerabilities stack up over time. The other thing I'd mention is of the 600 and some odd they talk about, they don't give us any criticality uh, breakdown, at least uh, on, on the summary of the report. I, I didn't go actually read the report. I probably should have. If 80% of these are lows, do I care about those yeah, I, as much? So, so I think you're on, an, you're on a good point. And, and certainly... Where where I came from, this was a topic of hot debate, you know, especially the minimization point. Because if you're consuming, let's say, a Red Hat or an Ubuntu provided container, and and those are released relatively frequently, you know, your your you can either take the path of maintaining all of the componentry that's in the container, or you can take the path of waiting for Ubuntu or Red Hat or whoever to release a new version. And, you know, and, and if you, if you wait sometimes, especially where you're, depending on where you're at in the life cycle of the, the version of the operating system that container is based on, you may or may not actually get updates for all criticality of vulnerabilities. And so, so that can be a problem. And I think the other thing I would say is that just because you have even the 4.2% that were deemed higher critical and, and under active exploitation doesn't mean that in the context of that container that it's actually exploitable. Like there could be 
you know, I'm just a stupid example, right? You could have Apache inside a container, but Apache isn't actually running in the container. And if that version of Apache is exploitable, then it shows up in that list. On the, on the flip side, and something that you said, which I think is, is the right way to think about it, if you have exploitable stuff in, you know, in the environment, it creates more opportunity for lateral movement or privileged escalation or what have you. So even like, look, it's, it's a, I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a hazard, right? Like it's, even if you, even if you get comfortable that nothing is exposed, it's still removing your safety net. Sure. And I think it also exposes just a hygiene aspect. Yeah. It, you know, there, there's something that is valuable, though intrinsic and difficult to, to articulate, of keeping your stuff up to date on a regular basis. If you had an urgent issue to come out for a patch, for instance, you're at a much more recent version, it's usually a lot less painful and disruptive, less disruptive to patch just having the policy and process in place to keep this stuff up to date usually is indicative of a better, more mature program from a security standpoint. Uh, certainly there are, you know, we come at this from a security standpoint. There are arguments to be made about, as you mentioned, maintenance costs, you know, regression testing, disruptions, et cetera. There, there, there's always a balance here. Uh, also, I was just kind of looking at, I went a little deeper into the report itself and that 4% stat that they use is, is actually across all 16,557 identified CVEs with critical or high severity ranking that they had in their entire survey. Mm -hmm. So, which is still not great, right? But there could have been a concentration of risk in some of those. I don't know that that's the average, uh, the way they say it. I think the, the article we were using maybe abstracted or sort of conflated some stats there together in a way that made it seem a little riskier than it might have been. All that being said, I'm a big proponent of keeping your containers updated on a regular basis. Don't get me wrong, including all the packages inside of it and keep it current and keep it, you know, honestly, there's so many ways to automate this now. You probably should just set it to a monthly patch cycle and have a nice day. Yeah, I think I think that's the right way. That's the right way to go about it. Just having having your containers pull in the latest dependencies rebuild and then redeploy on a, you know, we were striving for every two weeks, but once, even What's, once a month would be good. What scares me more about dependencies and containers is abandoned or dormant dependencies that are no longer being maintained. And how do you know that? That's, and, you know, it's a real problem. Yeah. It's not like all these have an end of life policy statement published somewhere. It's, that is a that's a real problem, and I, I I think you end up having to use you know if you're not actively tracking it, which you know some somehow some way you should have an understanding some some sort of situational awareness on that. Either you're tracking it manually or you're using a tool that will do it for you. I'm sure that this company that produced this report has some you know flashy <laughs> box that will will do it for you, or or I, I think there's others like Aqua or whatnot that, that, um, do the same thing, but you know, it's a good, it's a good point. And, you know, I, I used to say like, you know, whether it's in the context of a container or not using open source is kind of like adopting a puppy, you know, yeah. it, it's yours. Like you have to take care of it. It doesn't matter if like, people who start, you gave it life are, are, are off doing something else. You are using it. You, it is in, it is in your yard. Now you are responsible for it. And if that means that you have to be the one to fix it, then so be it. And if you can't fix it, well then perhaps you should either find someone who can or stop using it. And I know that that's, you know, probably not a super popular thing to say with the developers, but you know, I don't disagree. I, I think one of the challenges I've run into is let's say, what do you consider a dormant or unsupported package at that point? Do you look at how long it's been since somebody did an update? What if there's no need for an update? How do I know if somebody has just abandoned this package or if some other bad actors taken it over, which we've seen happen? There's a lot of dependencies built around these sort of third-party packages that I don't think a lot of people really think about. They're like, oh, it's fine. That's somebody else's problem. No, it's your problem. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. So, I've been so, thinking about, if nothing's been updated in two years, I should maybe look at a different, different. 
Most um, open source, this is something that, that I've come to recognize as, as a result of running my own stuff recently, because I have that same question. Like I run, you know, I, I, I run certain, certain things that look like they're abandoned. And one of the ways, one of the cues I use now, this is difficult to do at scale. I'm not saying it scales at all, but it's the one I use. And that is almost all open source depends on other open source components. And, and so, you know, while the application itself may not need any changes, I look to see if its dependencies have been updated. You really need a tool of some variety to help you with that, though, because yeah. it's so complex. And not everybody runs those tools or cares about them. But I really think that it's the kind of stuff that can bite you. Absolutely. And also, like, there are ways to build containers that are hardened or slim that only have just the dependencies you need to run whatever it is you're trying to run. And I don't think a lot of people do that either, but you probably should. Yeah, definitely.